of interest to some folks, um, per perhaps the guys, but then again the guys have surprised me at times. I've known them to be show as much interest in, in quilting than the ladies, so uh, one never knows. Now I did mention that in my past I was a very avid quilter and uh, I was looking for something 
and I found this quilt that I had made but never really finished. Um, I, I did finish the backing. I quilted it all. What I did not finish was the binding. And this quilt was actually made from silk ties. Men's silk ties. And it, it was a very long and involved process. I mean, I literally... Okay, went to the thrift shops. Would only buy ties that were a dollar a piece. I think I could get them for two dollars or a dollar in those days. And uh, anyway, I was by the thrift shops today just to uh, see how inflation has affected my <laughs> silk tie um, ability to make another one of these quilts, and it is astronomical. Um, yes, it has been quite a number of years, I'll admit, but um, where I used to be able to get silk ties at thrift stores for a dollar to two dollars, they are now five dollars or four ninety nine to seven forty nine if you actually want a silk tie. Um, and I don't think the polyester are any cheaper. I don't think they really differentiate anymore. But um, I looked for and would only purchase silk ties. And then I took them home, took them completely apart, washed them, pressed them, and then cut out, um, as you can see, wedges. And each one of these wedges I made into a square and then the squares were sewn together to make a quilt. Now, I would have loved to have made this into a very large quilt. I'm one of those people that believe in big, big useful quilts. Uh, but very, very, very uh, intensive and time consuming. And I just, after 10 or 12 years of quilting, I just kind of gave up for a while. But I decided that this based on the amount of effort that I had put into it, that I would finally at least finish the binding. So today, I, as I said, I did go out to the thrift stores. I was going to perhaps buy some silk ties and finish the edge with that, but in the end it just, uh, once again, would have been way labor intensive and um, because it needs to be backed. Silk on its own is very fine and very fragile, so each one of these actually have a backing fabric as well. Um, each one of these wedges were backed onto a fabric, at least a square. And then, of course, I used cotton batting, and then there's another backing, so it's a very stable, very strong quilt. But in the end, I decided to go for a cotton fabric that I'm going to use for binding and I think that this will complement at least it won't take away from the quilt so I just picked another dark fabric and so I am going to actually make binding and finish this quilt and now I want to cut this fabric for binding and I probably should press it first and I'm not going to wash it first. I know a lot of quilters want to wash all their cottons before they use them, but I've never done so. So, um, so I want to cut four inch strips. And it looks like the edge is pretty good on this one, so I'm going to start there. Okay, pull out my ruler, find my rotary cutter, yes, I have two of them, still have some of the tools, one of the things that I do have quite a bit of is threads, I never gave up my threads, uh, I spent a fortune on threads, okay, so I'm going to cut four inch strips, Okay, I will need four. 
I've measured, I will need four and a bit, so I am going to do five. Four and one more. Now this one, it's gonna be extra for sure, but we don't wanna be short. And the fabric was on sale. So I, am, I machine sew one side and I hand sew the other, just so that uh, you are aware of how I do this. Okay, put the ruler away. And now I'm gonna put my makeshift ironing board up here because the next step is to press this. Okay, next thing that we do here is that we take this four inch fabric and we double it up and press it. Now whenever I've made binding, I've always doubled up the binding, give it extra strength, and this is what you're seeing me do here. Okay, well I searched through my said thread stash and I managed to find a royal blue which will work in this case. You want something fairly dark. And I have this <laughs> stand, I don't know if I can show you the whole thing, but it is something that Mark made for me um, to house a, let's see if I can show it here, camera, 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 okay, there, yeah, it <laughs> made, he made it out of pieces of aluminum, and it basically is to be able to hold a, sp a spool of thread for me, because this machine is not designed to work with large spools like this. Okay, and now it doesn't matter if they're different colors, just all that matters is that it doesn't show up. Okay, I'm back, and I have this acrylic table that is specifically designed for this machine. Now what, we, what I do is I take one strip, and then take the second strip, and I sew diagonally from one corner to the other. And then of course all this excess is trimmed off. Okay, and I'm going to just continue along. I'm not even going to trim that just yet, but I will continue along and attach all these pieces together. back even after I don't know what is it 10 years since I've done this <laughs> may take a little bit of effort but it does come back and I believe I have one more Now we can take these apart. And this is what it looks like. So what we do is we trim this excess off and throw it away. And yes, I did say that there is a bit of fabric waste, but what happens is you don't have the bulk it spread over the whole 
thing so it's a lot easier to sew. So now I'm just going to trim and press this again. Well, it looks like I didn't have my um, camera running. I thought I did, but what I did here was um, pressed all the seams to one side and then pressed it nice and flat here. So I did that with all the seams. Once again, pressed it to one side and then pressed it down. So I never start at the end of a quilt. I start in the middle of it to put the binding on and that's because you don't want any more bulk on your corners than you need to. So the first little bit, I don't even sew. I leave a tail. And what I'm doing here is just lining these up flush. Okay, the the raw side of the fabrics because what I did is I have fabric folded over so the raw sides get um, you meet up with the raw side of the quilt. Okay, I'm starting at approximately, I suspect, you know, close to half an inch in. You stop there, pull it up, line it up with the edge of the quilt here, pull it down, line it up with the edge of the quilt there, and what in effect you have is a little fold like this. Okay, hopefully there's enough light to be able to see this. Okay, so I stopped and I oiled my machine. I haven't used this in years and I don't want to damage it so I decided to stop and make sure that it was oiled before I continued to do anything here. So I am going back now to working on my first corner and I did have it lined up. We'll show you again on the subsequent corners. Okay, once again, Try to uh, and here we can back stitch a bit and try to do as straight a line as possible. And I did manage to lengthen my stitches. I'd forgotten how to do a few things, but it's all coming back. You see what you have here on the corner is that when you turn this you have a perfect corner and I don't know if you can see that against the dark fabric but that's what we're trying to accomplish here okay
The machine work is done. Well, that was a bit of a struggle for me. I have not used this machine or done any quilting in whew, 10 years. <laughs> okay.